My name is Omid Tafigian. I'm Assistant Professor of Philosophy at the American University in Cairo. I'm also Honorary Research Associate in the Philosophy Department at the University of Sydney. For quite some time I've been working with displaced and exiled people in different capacities, particularly looking at uh, literature, art, new knowledge, creating new knowledge, and also as a translator. I've been working with uh, academics as well as people in the, um, in the community, in the cultural sector, uh, and creating a whole new narrative around what it means to be displaced and exiled, and also how to resist the systemic forms of oppression that people are facing. I've been working with Stephanie, who's now based uh, at the University of Lincoln for some time, for quite uh, a few years. In 2017, at the beginning of 2017, we introduced Behruz Bouchani's work to a new academic community uh, at the University of New South Wales. And uh, we screened part of his film, Choka, Please Tell Us the Time. And Behruz actually uh, gave a short talk about his work from Manus Island, particularly his journalism and his film. And we gave people an, uh, an introduction to what was coming up, in particular uh, his book, uh, which, I was, uh, which I started translating soon after that. So entering the academic sphere was extremely important for Behrouz because it meant that he was being recognised now as a knowledge producer, as someone who's making a significant uh, contribution to intellectual discourse. Uh, and this made really important interconnections with the cultural work that he was doing and the uh, uh, art community that he was um, starting to uh, penetrate and also a whole range of other really important interventions. After Stephanie left Sydney and came to Lincoln, we continued our collaborations and what was really important for us was that we introduce Behruz's book to different communities, different institutions here in the UK. And so, so far I've been working with um, Stephanie and Kaya to introduce the book and also prepare for the release of No Friend But The Mountains. My involvement in this project um, involves a number of things. First of all, I translated Behruz's book from Farsi into English. Uh, I'm also a researcher, so I, I collaborate with Behruz on research projects. Uh, I've written a number of um, articles and, um, and involve, I'm involved in a number of different studies, uh, particularly about the book, but also looking at the um, broader issues about um, uh, immigration detention and, um, and border politics. And also I'm um, working with Stephanie here in Lincoln um, in terms of introducing this really important work to um, different people, different um, communities around the world. What I'd like people to take away from this project is first of all to understand that this is a structural issue. Um, when it comes to politics, when it comes to um, our social institutions, uh, especially our education system, uh, this creates an environment, it creates a landscape where this, these sorts of events, these sorts of um, situations can take place. Uh, we're creating, by, by not approaching this in terms of the um, structural problems, in terms of the um, systemic issues, we're allowing uh, a situation where innocent people can be locked up for indeterminate amounts of time and also tortured um, systematically. The second thing that I'd like people to take away is to understand that what we're dealing with here is an ideology, it's a philosophy, it's penetrating all aspects of our lives and it is deeply ingrained in our curriculum, it's part of our education, uh, it's part of the discussions we have. Uh, in order to really transform things, we need to think about it in terms of the ideas and the narratives, the discourses that influence us. So one of the things that's extremely important is that people who are, are locked up in places like Manus Island, Nauru, in fact, all detention centres, even people who are in community detention, um, people who haven't been given the right to, to settle in, uh, in a place, in, in, to make a place their home. All of these people uh, are impacted by the systems, by the institutions, by the, by the politics, but also by the ideology that pervades our societies. We're not talking about people who are simply just victims. We're not just talking about people who are struggling. We're talking about people with passions and ideas, 
with uh, important contributions to um, intellectual life, uh, people who are creative, people who uh, can make uh, enormous contributions to the way we see the world, to the symbols, to the stories that we, uh, that we make part of our everyday lives. So when we think about an issue such as home, such as what the fabric of our society, of our, um, of our uh, communities, we need to think about how these people are actually important to our learning, important to our flourishing as well. My contribution also involves um, academic work that I've been developing on my own. Uh, my, the work that I do with displaced and exiled people and incarcerated people uh, develops new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of critiquing and also, imp more importantly, new ways of acting against um, this system of oppression and domination. So my academic work focuses on these particular issues and involves the people who I'm collaborating with as academic researchers, as thinkers as well. Home for me is a place where you can be respected, where your identity, your contribution, your ideas can be acknowledged, where you're free to express yourself the way you, um, you think is important to you. But it's also about, home is also a place where um, uh, you can uh, live with dignity. And also, home is a place where difference is understood. It's not a place where you need to become like everyone else or you need to fit a particular model or a particular kind of interpretation of uh, uh, what life should be or what living well should be. Home is a place where your difference is also appreciated.